Good morning, everyone. Hi. Uh, my name is uh, Wu Mingxuan, but uh, everybody can call me TT Cat. And uh, welcome to come to Taipei, my hometown, my country, Taiwan. And uh, thank you all to be here. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So. Um, um, can I show, uh, can every staff from the OCF wave the, your hand? So uh, in these three days, if you find you have anything, you need any uh, uh, assistance, please find anyone with this orange pin, okay? So each one of you should get a, a white pin because you know WCIT, they, have, they say they have uh, 4,000 people. So we don't want to, um, you know, <laughs> Confused. Okay, who steal our coffee and uh, cake? Right. So, um, my name is T.T. Cat. I from Open Culture Foundation. My job is to do the international exchange for the civic tech. So basically, my job is making friends. I got paid by making friends. Like, so please help my job better to making friends with me. Okay. So. Um, uh, this three days conference and uh, the whole week event, the Civita Fest, we have a call for conduct. So if you can look at the uh, share note, you can find the call for conduct. Please don't violate it. <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> we have Wi Fi. The Wi Fi is uh, WCIT Wi Fi. You can use the 5G or uh, others, right? There's no password. And our hashtag is Civita Fest. Of course, and also TTAC, TTAC at Taipei, right? And uh, if you didn't RSVP for tonight's Google party, please do on the information desk. We will have the party at the uh, Taipei 101 building, 75 floors. So don't miss it. Right, and uh, for uh, TTAC at Taipei, find, uh, eventually we have a two. 169 attendees from across 33 countries and uh, 171 organization. Asia Pacific, we have 94 attendees and uh, Europe, 28. North America, 24. Latin America, six people and eight people from Africa and Taiwan people from, uh, there's uh, 109 people here. So, wow. And uh, I want to remind you, everybody, that uh, most of uh, our people here, the English is not our first language. So if you use this language, we, um, we should be very grateful that we can use this language to communicate with each other, learn from each other. But if you speak English, please be loudly and clearly to make sure everybody understands you, okay? We don't have an interpreter uh, for this event, so what we do is we pull a share note here. Okay, so if you, uh, uh, you can find a note on the civitechfast.org um, on our website, and it's a corroborative note, so everybody can add it. So please do the share note together, let the people understand more clearly about what people say on the stage. The event could not be better if we don't uh, contribute together. So we do have on-conference uh, sessions, and there's a whiteboard uh, outside. You can submit your proposal by the end of today and vote what you want to have, what session you want to have tomorrow and uh, on a Wednesday. So uh, the vote and the summit will close by the uh, 6 o'clock today, right? So. Uh, in the end, I want to say thank you for our sponsor. It's a uh, Full Bomb Bank and also Google and uh, Microsoft Local and also our partner, My, My, uh, My Society. So let's welcome uh, Rebecca from My Society for our wel welcome. Lovely to see you all here. Um, just as a show of hands, how many people here know my society? Oh, great. Wonderful. 
we're amongst friends. I'm so happy. Um, thank you all for coming. When we started Tic Tac a few years back, we, we weren't even sure if anyone was going to come. Sorry. <laughs> Um, and over the years, Tic Tac has, has grown. Um, we've, we've got more of you guys to come along and share your experiences and your knowledge and, and network. And it's, I think, really grown into a really strong global com uh, community. So thank you all. Uh, amazing big thank you to, um, to all the guys that organized this. Um, the Open Culture Foundation have worked tirelessly um, pretty much over the last year to, to put this all together. So I'd really actually just like to give them a hand. Uh, a round of applause if you'll join me. Uh, so thank you, and I'll just pass over to, uh, to CL uh, to, uh, to say hello on their behalf as well. Hello, everyone. It's good to see you. Um, so I'm CL from Taiwan, of course, and uh, I started the Gob Zero community about um, five years ago now. So when I first started it, it was just like, oh, why is the government doing crazy things and how can we fix it? And later on, I, feel, I, I realized that, oh, so many people around the world are doing the same thing. And then um, Taiwan is probably recognized as one of the most vibrant community because we are not uh, short of controversial topics every, everywhere. <laughs> so, um, and there's a lot of open source developers here. Um, so uh, in um, 2014, we started the, um, the Open Culture Foundation along with all the open source community as a supporting uh, uh, entity that helps um, all the grassroots community to work together and then um, also support the, um, the less um, focused issues here in Taiwan. Um, so we are here at the Civic Tech Fest. We are trying to um, gather all the people around the world working on this area. And you might notice that, um, I'll keep it this really short because we had a really lengthy uh, opening if you were in the WCIT, right? Um, so you, you might notice that uh, we are working with WCIT in this event and um, it's because that we think that the civic tech circle is like um, sort of a small circle that most people probably know, like 77% of people here. And uh, we want to um, recognize there, there's a greater um, technology community. They're probably working um, more on the economic side of the, the technology. And by, by joining force in this event, uh, we will have chances to mingle with more, more people uh, outside our circle, maybe during lunch break, or maybe we lure them in with the coffee. And uh, so, um, so I hope you, um, um, during this event, in, um, in, the, in the hallway or in lunch, uh, talk with other people so and say, hey, we're doing this uh, great civic tech work. Um, so we will be um, doing um, mostly sessions today and tomorrow morning. And then there's the unconference tomorrow afternoon and Wednesday morning. And then there's the grand, uh, the grand panel in WCIT, uh, which I will be moderating um, about the open government and uh, civic tech. Um, so, uh, uh, um, besides the, the actual formal agenda, we have the, well, the Google party that uh, TDK mentioned tonight, and also the gala dinner uh, tomorrow evening that is also RSVP required. Um, and also, we have a typhoon to welcome. <laughs> 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 so we are watching it closely, and then we will be uh, letting you know like, uh, what our contingency plans, uh, if it will affect Wednesday or um, other things during the week. Uh, we'll be posting it in the, in the Tic Tac uh, Google group to, to uh, keep you posted. And uh, don't worry, we are quite used to this, and uh, we'll be prepared. <laughs> OK, so that's uh, pretty much everything from me right now. And uh, I want to welcome back uh, the Rebecca from uh, my society uh, to give an opening um, talk about the importance of impact. Welcome, Rebecca. So hello again, it's, it's been so long. Um, <laughs> so when we put this together, um, we weren't really sure what kind of audience we were gonna get, whether it was gonna be um, a lot of our friends, people that uh, know and, and love civic tech, or whether we were gonna be talking to, to people that hadn't really even known about civic tech before. You know, We weren't sure how many people from the main conference were gonna join us. Um, I think really what I wanted to do was talk more about the importance uh, of impact and, and thinking about it rather than what exactly civic tech is. I think most of us here have a pretty good grasp of, uh, I'll just stay right here. 
<laughs> I can't move. Um, I think most of us here have a pretty good idea of what civic tech kind of is. Um, so I think I, I want to focus a little bit more on why we should be, be quite sort of mindful about it. Um, so as you know, in my society, um, we're a not-for-profit, um, and we want to invent and popularize digital tools that enable citizens to exert power over institutions and decision makers. That is kind of our very broad catch-all definition of, of civic tech. Um, there's a lot of uh, discussion about what civic tech is, how to define it, where the boundaries are. Um, I'm not going to go over that. It'll take longer than 20 minutes, and half of the room will still disagree with the other half anyway. Um, <laughs> so I'm not really going to put parameters around this. I think, in, in my heart, I think civic tech is just tech that is there to do good, that, to, to enable people, uh, to inspire people, um, and that's not there for kind of commercial or economic gain. I think really what we want to do is help people um, to, to help themselves when it comes to like, civic activity. So. As far as my society goes, um, some of you will be familiar with our tools, um, things like Fix My Street, which enables people to report issues in their local communities. Um, what Do They Know, uh, which is based on our Albertelli platform, which enables people to, to really use um, right to know laws in their own countries to find out information that's really meaningful for them and their societies. Um, and our Pombola platform um, in the UK, that's theyworkforyou.com. Um, in Kenya, it's Mozalendo. Uh, in South Africa, it's People's Assembly. Websites that enable people to actually understand what's going on in their parliament, enable people to monitor what their, uh, their politicians are doing, what they're saying, how they're voting, uh, and really give them the information to, to take forward and hold those people to account, make sure that they're actually doing what they say they should be doing. Um, these are just a few of our websites. You know, uh, I know people in this room have really, really cool software, tech, apps that uh, are all over the world. Um, and I, th I think it's so great that there's such a kind of rainbow and a wide spectrum um, of cool civic tech that, that enables people to do things like this. And we have a lot of assumptions about civic tech. You know, we. We really think that we build it to do good. We really, we really think that what we're doing is worthwhile. It has not just a value in terms of one person having an, you know, doing an activity or getting something done quicker than they might have done offline. Um, we, we, we have this assumption that civic tech actually has an amplifying, beneficial effect. Um, you know, we, we believe that we make democracy better to access. Um, we believe that these tools help create better communities, better, stronger communities, where people feel safer and more secure and feel empowered to do what they need to do. Um, we think that civic tech makes it simple to ask for information that affects people's lives. You know, we, we build these things and we think, this makes it easy for you. Um, and we believe that actually what we do is really, really user-friendly. You know, this is something that we, in my society, and I'm sure you guys do a lot of work on, making sure that your sites are actually easy for people to navigate, easy for people to use, um, so that they don't need to have a PhD in politics to understand how to ask a politician for help or to complain about something that's happening in their neighborhood. But a lot of these are kind of assumptions. We really, really need to test them. You know, these are great assumptions. If all of them are true, it's great, you know. <laughs> we can just go home now because, yay, civic tech is amazing. Um, and I think we can... We, we are vulnerable maybe to our own, uh, our own enthusiasm sometimes, you know. We really, really think these things are great. I don't know what it's like, you know, our developers in my society, they, they give birth to something beautiful. And, um, you know, as any new parent, they, send, they share it with the world and they just think it's the best thing ever. Um, but we really need to, to be professional about this. We really need to make sure that actually what we're doing, what we say we're doing, um, is what we, what we are doing. Because it's easy to be an evangelist, but really, funders, uh, the wider world wants proof uh, that we are doing what we say we're doing, especially because most of us work on a shoestring and spend a lot of our time begging people for money to keep us going. So we really need to show that we not only we have impact, that, that our tools are making a difference, but that they're making the difference that we say they do. This is one of my favorite stories. Uh, many of you may have heard me tell it before, but I'm going to carry on because I love it. 
Um, this is just an example of, of impact, undoubted impact, but impact that wasn't the impact we were expecting. So in 2005, uh, the Times wrote uh, this, this piece basically saying that our website, They Work For You, uh, which monitors parliamentarians, um, was actually having an impact that we had no idea was going to happen. We, we hadn't even thought that this impact would manifest in this way. Um, basically, we had a very, very crude ranking system on the website that ranked MPs speaking. The, the idea was that if you speak more in Parliament, then you're more effective. Uh, but, you know, the, some, some of the more digital savvy MPs and their staff sort of twigged. They saw this little website that was doing this ranking and they thought, you know, it'd be really good for, for us to, to, you know, push ourselves up that ranking. It looked good to our constituents. You know, next time we're, uh, we're out there asking for votes, we can say, well, I'm in the top 10 speakers in, in Parliament. Of course I'm having an, uh, an impact. Of course I'm, I'm doing a really good job. You know, I'm doing way better than the other candidate or the person over there. Um, this was something that, you know, MPs saw as, as something that they could actually work their way up the rankings to benefit themselves. They weren't necessarily saying anything better. There wasn't more quality coming out. There wasn't greater quality of debate. They weren't helping anymore. They were just adjusting their speaking behaviors to game the system. Um, and, you know, this was, this was 2005, you know. Most of us weren't even on Facebook back then. Like, camera phones were barely a thing. Uh, this teeny tiny website that, that put this ranking up online had, had an impact on one of the oldest parliaments in the world. Um, so what I'm trying to say here is a lot of our stuff can have impact. A lot of us are looking for the really positive impact. A lot of us are looking for our sites to say, right, well, yeah, we said this makes people's lives better. It makes people's lives better in this way. But so much other stuff could be happening. This is really interesting. You know, this is one of my favorite stories because at no point did any of our developers sit down and think, well, actually, if we put this ranking out here, what, you know, what unexpected impacts might it have? And are they good impacts? Are they impacts we want to see? Um, on the one hand, great, we managed to influence this, this enormous influential parliament. Um, on the other hand, not really, not really in a really beneficial way for, for the people that we, uh, that we want to serve. So when thinking about impact, I really encourage everyone not just to look for the, the positive stories that you want to tell your funders. Um, look for the really interesting things that you, you maybe don't even know are happening. Um, because that way we get a far, far richer picture of what civic tech is doing, what impact it's having. Um, and, and how, you know, maybe this wasn't the impact we wanted, but this enabled us to sit down, think more, and, and think, okay, well, if we tweak it this different way, maybe we can change behavior in a more positive way. But the great news is that people that use civic tech really do believe in it. Um, we asked people uh, that were using parliamentary monitoring sites in Kenya, the US, the UK, South Africa. We asked them how they felt about these sites, specifically whether they felt having access to this information digitally in the format it was in enabled them to hold their government to account. Um, and overwhelmingly, people thought it did, at least in part. You know, at least in part, people that use these websites really believe that, that it's a good tool for them to use to, to enable them to hold their governments to account. So this is great news. <laughs> you know, if we can get people to the sites, people really do believe in it. Um, and, and on the same survey, you know, I'm not going to throw, throw all of the results up here, but we asked a lot of these questions, and people really do enjoy using these sites. They think that if they, these sites weren't available, maybe the governments would behave differently, maybe politicians would behave differently, and not necessarily for the better. Uh, so this is, you know, this is on the yay civic tech side of things. This is great. Um, but let's, you know, take the next couple of days to kind of share all, all of our experiences, to talk about not just the positive, but also the negatives, the, the unexpected things that might be happening. Um, and, and really just have a really, really wonderful time over the next few days. Um, I, can't, I can't say how excited I am and how interested I am to, to hear all of the presentations. Um, and please, you know, me, me and Gemma from my society are here all, all week, so please come and talk to us. Uh, we'd love to meet you all. 
Um, otherwise, I'm going to stop there and invite my panel up onto the stage.